the distinctive profile of the sandstone ridge of Black Down on Hazelmere's doorstep forms a prominent landmark on the horizon from many parts of the South Downs National Park. At over 900 feet, it commands extensive views south and east across the entire Western Weald to the South Downs, views which have probably attracted people for millennia. This open and windswept landscape of wavy hair grass, purple heather and pine trees offers a true sense of the wild, untamed nature. But in reality, this masks a history of management and use which stretches back thousands of years. The National Trust, in collaboration with the Blackdown and Hindhead supporters and the University College London, have been working to uncover this hidden past through traditional archaeological field survey, documentary research and the use of specialist LiDAR data. LiDAR uses airborne laser scanning to create an accurate 3D model of the landscape. Pulses of infrared light are scanned across the ground, reflecting back up to the aircraft where sensors calculate the point in space where the light reflected off the Earth. Millions of these individual points, in the case of Black Down, around 36 million, can then be stitched together to form an exceptionally detailed model of the landscape. One of the key advantages of LiDAR is that the infrared light used is capable of penetrating through porous vegetation. Here we can see an aerial photograph draped over the LiDAR-generated digital surface model, showing the trees and other vegetation. But using the LiDAR data we are able to strip away this vegetation to reveal subtle earthworks, the banks, ditches, platforms and pits, which indicate archaeological sites. As the climate improved at the end of the last ice age, around 10,000 years ago, the evidence suggests humans were increasingly exploiting and utilising this area. Although there is no naturally occurring flint on Black Down, it has long been known as a source of prehistoric flint artefacts. Collected over the last hundred years through chance finds and antiquarian excavation, the Hazelmere Educational Museum now has a collection of over 2,000 flint tools, ranging from axes and mace heads to arrowheads for hunting, blades for butchery, and scrapers for preparing animal hides. Blackdown was clearly being used by hunter-gatherer communities over a prolonged period, perhaps because it offered a vantage point to observe game and intercept them as herd animals moved up the watercourses in the adjacent valleys. The LiDAR survey has revealed that this level of activity continued into the Bronze Age, around 4,500 years ago. Three circular enclosures along the southwestern ridge of the hill each around 20 metres diameter with an encircling bank and ditch, may represent a rare form of Bronze Age burial monument, known as a disc barrow. In fact, these sites often have no evidence for any actual burials and may have been a form of ceremonial enclosure. The dense distribution of barrows across the chalk has been interpreted as representing a huge sacred landscape, with isolated clusters of barrows on outcrops such as Black Down representing smaller ritual areas. The position of the enclosures at the southern end of the Blackdown Plateau, overlooking the entire Western Weald, may have had a powerful resonance for local Bronze Age communities. These monuments were markers designed to be seen and respected. Iron Age communities, around two and a half thousand years ago, also appear to have made use of Blackdown. A tradition has existed for some time of an Iron Age hill fort, crowning the narrow ridge at Castle Copse in the southwestern corner of Blackdown. A circular feature labelled as Camp is shown on a 1724 map of Sussex. The recent LiDAR survey has shown a circular enclosure around 50 metres diameter with an encircling ditch and bank up to one metre tall, which may represent this hill fort. Features such as this may have been associated with the ironworking industry or mineral extraction. They may also have functioned as seasonal stock enclosures or as seasonal residences for communities using the weald for summer grazing. Looking at the distribution of hill forts in the region, shown here by the red markers at Anstebury, Hascombe Camp, Holmbury Hill and Hammer Wood, Black Down fits an obvious gap with the same characteristics of a strong defensive position on a promontory site at the edge of an escarpment overlooking the Weald. Black Down may have been established as common land as early as the 9th century. Land considered unsuitable for clearance or cultivation, but which was nonetheless essential to the local population. The land provided grazing for animals, which kept the common open and prevented scrub growth, but also a huge range of other resources – wood for fuel, turf for roofing, bracken for cattle bedding. Birch was used to make brooms and birch wine, and heather was used as an antiseptic to make ale 
and also supported a population of bees often kept by commoners. The activity which has left the most visible trace, however, is the quarrying of chert. LiDAR data has helped to reveal the extent of the complex network of pits and trenches which pockmark the top of the plateau. These range from single pits to complex workings with several levels. The stone was not quarried as an organised industrial endeavour, but on a piecemeal basis by commoners, following seams in the rock. This activity was probably going on throughout the medieval period, but account books reveal that the scale of extraction escalated in the 19th century. Over 500 metric tonnes were quarried in 1842 alone, ranging from road stones and pitches to building stones and sand. The historic trackways, which crisscross Blackdown, bear testament to the fact that, although in many ways this was a marginal landscape, it was also a busy one. Over 40 historic routes have been identified, many probably established in the medieval period. These range from droveways for moving stock, to woodsman's tracks and paths for turf cutters or transporting stone. Tracks lead up to the common from all of the surrounding areas. It's easy to imagine Blackdown as a melting pot, where the occupants of different administrative areas, manors, parishes, counties, shared a common ground. Some of the tracks provide evidence for the numerous small farmsteads surrounding the common, many of which now remain only as low stone footings and platforms. More recently, the remote landscape and sweeping views of Blackdown have been recognised as somewhere to come to escape, to be inspired. This was the case for arguably the most famous historical figure associated with Blackdown, the poet Alfred Lord Tennyson. He moved into nearby Aldworth House in 1867 and built a summer house at the Temple of the Winds. It is easy to imagine that this viewpoint inspired the lines You came and looked and loved the view Long known and loved by me Green Sussex fading into blue With one grey glimpse of sea Another notable association is with Sir Robert Hunter, co-founder of the National Trust. A local Hazelmere resident, he became an expert in defending common land from development. In 1906, he set up the Hindhead Commons Committee to manage this newly acquired National Trust land. The committee remains today as the Blackdown and Hindhead supporters. In 1944, Blackdown was given to the National Trust, who continue to manage it today for public access and nature conservation, working to preserve and restore the Heathland character which has defined it for at least a thousand years. After nearly a century's absence, grazing cattle and sheep once more roam the common, helping to keep down the woodland scrub and rhododendron which have begun to encroach upon the hill. The area now provides a home for a number of threatened and endangered species, such as the nightjar, woodlark, sand lizards and sundew. Understanding the history and archaeology of Blackdown, how it has changed and evolved over the millennia, is essential not only to enhance our appreciation of this dramatic landscape, but also to ensure that it can be managed effectively for generations to come. Thank you.